sciatica, clinical diagnosis. About 3 million people suffer from sciatica and it usually resolves by itself within few weeks to few months and this problem can be self-diagnosed. So what is sciatica? A pain radiating along the course of the sciatic nerve which runs from the lower back to the buttock and the back of the thigh and into the lower leg and foot. The sciatica pain usually affects one side of the body. Sometimes it's called lumbar radiculopathy or a true sciatica. Sciatica is not a diagnosis. It is a symptom of underlying condition. Let's talk about the pain of sciatica. Pain is worse when sitting because sitting tension or tighten the sciatic nerve, stretch it, make it irritated and painful. The pain is a nerve pain, a sharp shooting pain like electric shock running down the leg with burning, tingling pins and needles. The pain could radiate to the leg and the foot and there might be some numbness. The patient may not be able to stand or walk, he may have some weakness, the pain varies, it could be constant and severe. Symptoms are felt in different areas of the leg and to the foot depending where the sciatic nerve is compressed and which nerve root is involved. Sudden movement, change of position, sneezing, coughing, makes the pain worse. Pain is better when the patient is walking or lie down and worse when sitting or standing. The patient may have low back pain but that's not as severe as the leg pain. A sciatic nerve got five nerve roots, two from the lumbar spine, L4, L5, and three from the sacral spine, S1, S2, and S3. All the five nerve roots will bundle together or join together to form the sciatic nerve. Then it branches out again in the thigh and the leg to give multiple muscular, motor, and sensory functions to specific areas and the specific muscles in the leg and foot. What is the cause of sciatica. Number one, lumbar disc herniation. A disc is a cushion between the vertebra and it has a soft inner material and when this material leaks out or herniate through a tear in the outer, a stronger fibrous layer that becomes a disc herniation. This irritates the close by nerve root. Sciatica is one of the most common symptoms of lumbar disc herniation. Usually the disc herniate in posterolateral direction and the most commonly affected level is L5 S1 and that will involve S1 nerve root. The best examination for disc herniation is the straight leg raising sign which we call the tension sign. There will be pain and parathesia at 30 to 70 degree of leg elevation. This elevation will reproduce the leg pain, but not the back pain. The straight leg raising usually diagnose L5 or S1 radiculopathy. MRI is the best study to diagnose disc herniation. 90% of the patient will improve within one month with non-operative care like rest, physiotherapy, and anti-inflammatory medication. When do you do surgery? You do surgery when there is progressive weakness or persistent disabling pain for more than six weeks. Who is a good candidate 
for surgery. A good candidate will have sciatica, which is leg pain, tension sign, means a positive straight leg raise sign, will have abnormal neurological findings, will have an MRI findings that is consistent with the neurological exam. What kind of surgery the patient will have? Hemilaminotomy or discectomy? Surgery is better and is quicker in recovery than no surgery. Surgery will cause improvement in pain, in function, and in satisfaction. But there is no significant difference in the work status between surgery and no surgery at four years. After surgery, the patient can return to intense activity at four to six weeks. Number two is degenerative disc disease. In this condition, Bony spurs may develop and press against the nerve, and if the disc involves L4, L5, then you will have an L5 nerve root involvement. Number three, ethmic spondylolisthesis. There are bars defect, and we know the word thesis means a slip. So the pars defect allows one vertebral body to slip forward on the other. Thesis is a big deal. A slip is a big deal. If you have an L5-S1, you will get an L5 nerve root. If you have an L4 slip on L5, then you will have L4 nerve root involvement. Slipping of the vertebral body the disc space collapse and the stress fracture or will cause the nerve to be pinched. Number four, the spinal stenosis. Narrowing of the spinal canal and narrowing of the foramen from an enlarged and hypertrophy of the facet joints and hypertrophy of the ligamentum flavum and disc generation and the spine arthritis, all that will cause pressure on the nerve roots and sciatica. Patient will have back pain, which is better with flexion or leaning forward over a shopping cart, and the pain is worse with extension of the back. There will be leg pain, weakness, cramps, burning, and heavy sensation. Neurological exam is normal in over 50% of the patients, and the straight leg raising is rarely positive. There is a differential diagnosis of lumbar stenosis. One of them is a hip disease. Second one is metastatic diseases. The third one is vascular problems. Every case that you suspect lumbar stenosis suspect a vascular problem, then examine the pulses. In both of these cases, the lumbar stenosis and the vascular claudication, walking will cause symptoms. Sitting will relieve both condition symptoms. Standing still will cause symptoms for the lumbar stenosis, but will relieve the symptoms for the vascular claudication. A stationary bicycle will relieve symptoms in lumbar stenosis and will aggravate the symptoms in vascular claudication. Number five, piriformis syndrome. The nerve can be irritated, runs under the piriformis muscle in the buttock, and if this muscle irritates the nerve, it causes sciatica. This is not a true lumbar radiculopathy, but they call it sciatica. Sciatica is not a disease. It is not a diagnosis. It is a symptom of underlying condition. A true sciatica from irritation of the nerve roots by disc problems is called lumbar radiculopathy or true sciatica or disc herniation. Pyriformis syndrome 
will cause sciatica due to irritation of the sciatic nerve itself. The last entity we need to mention is the SI joint dysfunction. That does not cause true radiculopathy. However, the symptoms sometimes mimic radiculopathy or mimic piriformis syndrome, and the clinician should be aware that these three entities can overlap and can mimic each other.